All right, there we go. So we'll give everybody a minute or so to jump on here. And uh, today we're covering the net a million, talking about leverage. And uh, we had a we had to make a quick shift on the uh, on the technology today. So I am uh, actually holding my phone as we make a shift, quick shift. Let's see if I can make this work. And uh, let's see if we can do this. There we go. That'll probably work. Awesome. So, <clears throat> making a quick shift today. I uh, see we've got, got some people coming in here, jumping in here. And so, we're talking about the MREA book club today. And we're talking about um, <clears throat> part two of Net a Million. And we're talking about leverage. And so, as we're talking about leverage today, the, um, you know, as we're going through this and, and, and talking about leverage, I don't plan on taking too much time because I, I think some of this stuff is is um, it's I think we have a tendency to overanalyze it and it it doesn't really need to be overanalyzed sometimes and so <clears throat> we're gonna start we're starting off on page number two thirty four of the of the MREA book uh, Millionaire Real Estate Agent book and this this part actually starts off um, and it's talking about taking time to train, recruit, and implement all the processes. And, and so as you're taking this time, you know, the, the statement that came to my mind was to, is to, are you working in your business or are you working on your vis business? A and so <clears throat> as, you're, as you're doing this, you know, you got to work in your business because you got to be lead generating as you're growing your business and those kind of things. And you also have to be working on your business, meaning you got to be setting apart certain time of your day to actually work on your business as well. And there is a difference there, you know, working in your business, going out, getting listings, working with buyers, those kind of things. And then working on your business is that recruiting your, your ta recruiting talent, um, you know, building systems and those kind of things. Now, if you were on any of my admin webinars, you know that I always say it is not your job as the mega agent to build the systems. Your, your job is to throw as much chaos in the system, test the systems, and let your admin build the systems. And then once you've tested the systems, come back and tweak the systems. Your admin tweaks. All you do is test. All you do is test. And so as you're looking at that, that's the thing is that our job as mega agents are not to build the systems. If we build the systems, I love it when Gary Keller said, every time I built a system, I turned it to mush. And so, you know, take that time. So <clears throat> as we're looking at this, the number one thing that we've got to realize when we're starting about leverage and we're talking about leveraging ourselves and, and leveraging in our business, the number one thing why people will use you as a mega agent, they use you because of the standards that you represent. All right? They don't use you because of who you are and that you're just this great, wonderful person. They use you because of the idea of customer service and the standard that you represent. And so as you're looking at this, we, we need to document all of our models. And so as we're documenting our models and we're looking through this, John Davis gave us an amazing, the CEO of Keller Williams Realty, he gave us an amazing model when it's talking about here on page number 236, he gave us an amazing model. See, in the book, it talks about, you know, we got to learn to recruit talent. We got to we got to learn to train them to do their job. We got to consult them to do their job at a high level. And then we got to learn to keep them. And John Davis broke it down even simpler for that. See, when you start, when you start to, or you make the decision that you are going to have success through others, then the number one thing you got to do is you got to realize is that you've got to become a leader. And as you become a leader, according to what John Davis gave us this past week, and it goes right along with what Gary wrote in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, he said, when you become a leader and you, you've got a leader, the number one thing you've got to do is the people that you're leading, you got to teach them. You got to teach them to do what you need them to do. Now, if this may be your first admin that you're hiring, obviously the 60% of your job that you do poorly is, is probably admin work. And so you may not be able to train an admin at a high level. So the teaching may come from someone else. And you can even leverage the teaching over to MAPS. You could actually 
hire Monica Reynolds to come in and, and teach your admin how to go at a high level on that. Now, the next part of this, this is a big part that would come back to you, is that now that you've got them and you've taught them what to do, now you have to coach them. And you got to coach them on how to do it at a higher level or how to be better. And then once you've got all three of those items done, then and only then do you get the abundance or the profitability. And that works right into, as, as John Davis said last week, that works right into the four conversations. Works right into the four conversations. And so I thought that was pretty pretty clear. As I was uh, reviewing the, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, uh, getting prepared for this, I was like, that's exactly what John Davis said. See, it was a model that was written back in 2004 when, when Gary wrote the book. And yet, it still stands the day. It's still the exact same model. It's just that John Davis, John Davis maybe come through and actually changed a little bit of the wording just to get it a little bit more clear. Because see, clarity is power, as we talk about in both. Now, the next piece here is, if we're hiring, are we hiring cul-de-sac talent or are we hiring, are we hiring capacity talent? And so I really wanted to give you the definition between those two. So <clears throat> cul-de-sac talent, someone that can do the job at, that you need them to do at the highest of levels, right? I mean, if you gave them this job, they could operate it and not only operate this job at the highest of levels, they can actually do that job that you need them to do better than anybody else. And yet they're still cul-de-sac talent. Because see, capacity talent not only can handle the job that you need them to do at the highest level, they're also going, hey, what else can I do? Hey, what else do I need? Hey, what else? You know, and they're always looking to do more, always looking to do more. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're looking for is we're looking for someone that can not only do the, the job that we need, we're looking, for, we're looking for someone that can do the job, future task of the job, and that's capacity talent, ladies and gentlemen. And so don't look at talent and go, man, they could do this job really, really well. Can they do this job really, really well? Plus, can they do anything else later on five years down the road that I need them to do? All right? So make sure you understand that. Now, we talked about this and said, you know, why do, why do people use you, the mega agent? Why do they use you in your business? They use you because of the standards that you represent. So now let's go back to what John Davis taught us and what we, what we found here on page 36, or 236. So people use you because of the standards you represent. All right, great. So that's the leadership. Now you gotta teach other people how to do that. How to, how to create that, that same standard, how to be that same standard that you're running your business by. And then the next part of this is that now as the, you've taught them how to do it, now you need to coach them how to do it even better. And then at that point, they will represent the exact same level of service that you represent. And then both of you get to have abundance, which is profit, which is profit. Now, I love this. On page number two, what was it? Two, 244. Page number 244. There's a graph there. It's figure five. Figure five in that graph, it actually goes through the process, the process of actually building actually building your operations manual. I'll show it to you. It's right here, right? That's the entire process for building your operations manual. Now, I know at Keller Williams, you have an operations manual, whether you think you do or whether you think you don't, you have one. There's an actual, a full operations manual that is included in KW Connect. Just go into KW Connect and actually type in M-R-E-A Ops. Right, MREA Ops, and there's a 269 page document in there that will actually break down the entire operations manual for you. Now you go, well, Jay Michael, that was written way back when, and it's, I'm here to tell you, yes, it was written way back in, yet the basics, the, the foundation of that operations manual is still into play, and this was how it was done. This was how it was done, ladies and gentlemen. That's how that course was written. And, and so as you're looking at this, you know, you're going through here. This I, I, this is so powerful. I'm, we actually are, are taking this out and printing it and, and blowing it up in my office where all my admins sit and, and so that they see this right there in front of them. So if there's a model that needs to be written, right here it is. You know, this is how to do it. And, and so when you get finished with that, you've got a full operations manual. And I just think, to me, that's powerful. 
It's absolutely powerful. Now, on page number 245, page number 245 of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, what it actually talks about, it says creating teamwork with rock and roll. And that's not R-O-L-L, -L, that's R-O-L-E. Now, most of the time when we hear R-O-L-E, we think role play. And yet, here's the thing. It's not so much role play as it is as it is making sure that the person is in the right seat on the bus. They're in the right role. And so if they're in the right role and you have clearly defined what their big rocks are, then ladies and gentlemen, you, you have actually created clarity for them. And when you've created clarity for them, what's going to happen is you're going to have that cohesion on the team and that team is going to roll. Now, and that's R-O-L-L. -L. And so let's talk about that for a second. So what are the five big rocks? Diana has given them to it. Diana Kikoska has given us the five big rocks that we all need to have as a real estate agent. What are those five big rocks that we have to have as a real estate agent? Well, number one, number one is that we've got to do lead generation. That's our first big rock, right? Because if we don't do lead generation, we've got no one to do number two to. And number two is lead follow-up. Now, Tony DeSello said that he was talking to Gary Keller this, this past week. And what he said is that he actually changed the statement a little bit. Gary is changing based on the research. He is saying that we used to say that 75% of your business would come from lead follow-up. Tony DeSello said that's changed. It's changed to 80 to 90% of your business will come from lead follow-up, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to me, that's a very, very powerful statement when you think about it. Because if you made $100,000 last year in real estate and your lead follow-up plans are not in place, meaning your 33 touches are not fully in place, and I'm not talking about 33 emails, I'm talking about your actual 33 touch, you're, you're calling somebody every quarter and, and, and you're, provide, you're sending them an item of value and you're sending them a birthday card, you're sending them an off-holiday uh, off holiday card and a house anniversary card and a birthday card. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where the 33 touch is at. So if you earned $100,000 a year in business last year and your 33 touch is not 100% on point, you may have left $800,000 on the table. That one scares me, right? That one just kind of makes me throw up a little bit in my mouth. And so as you're looking at this, you know, you, you're, you're talking about this and I'm like, oh, that's craziness, J. Michael. And so realize that your follow-up, your follow-up is huge. Now, the number third, the third one, the third one of the five things of a real estate agent's job description is to go on appointments. So you must lead generate and you must go on appointments, right? And, and so once you go on your appointments, now the next one, the next one, the fourth one is you got to negotiate contracts. You got to negotiate contracts. And then the fifth one is script, practice, and role play. And I always say, you know, as you're looking at those five things, they're not necessarily in order of importance. Because if they were in order of importance, importance, script, practice, and role play would be number one. Because we need to be doing that one first before we start lead generation so that we can make our lead generation as efficient as possible. Now, do you have five, the five big rocks for your admin? Do you have the five big rocks? We just gave you the ones for the real estate agents. Whether you're a buyer's agent or whether you're a listing specialist, those are your five big rocks as a real estate agent. So now do you have a clearly defined five big rocks for your admin, for your admin? All right. Now, next piece. And this one, as I was rereading this, it kind of stood out to me. I was like, tell me, you know, I, I got to get, I got to wrap my head around this one again. It says, become a minimalist, a mim minimalist with great communication. Ooh. Become a minimalist with great communication. See, when you think about this for a moment, you're striving to build a large sales business. You got to keep you got to keep the sales process to a, to a minimal. Yet you got to keep the customer interaction at a high level. And so that's where the that's where the communication is going to come from. See right here where it says Keeping the client informed, and this is on page number 249, the last page that we're covering today. Keeping the client informed is what creates high levels of customer service. Not the time that you spend together. In fact, they say talking, taking too much time can create less satisfaction. 
ladies and gentlemen, that, I mean, that's a mate, that's, right? I mean, that one right there. Yeah. So, yeah, I see that, Jennifer. I don't feel like there's anything minimalist about this business. And, and you know, I, I can appreciate that. And, and Gary always tells us, and Diana's created a bold law around it that says, success is simple, not easy. And I think sometimes, sometimes we have, we have, a, we have a tendency to overcomplicate things. See, there are five things that you, as an agent, need to do every single day. We just covered them. Number one, lead generation. Number two, lead follow-up. Number three, go on appointments. Number four, negotiate contracts. And number five, script practice and role play. Everything else can be leveraged out. Everything. Those five things cannot. And so you go, well, man, you know, Jim, I don't have the money to, to leverage all that stuff yet. Okay. Keep your foot on the gas with those five items and then go into a team meeting in your market center and, and just say, hey, can anybody that has a teenager that can drive, a teenager that can drive, that's look, that could use some extra money. And then you can just go and hire a teenager, go and put signs and lot boxes and flyers and those kind of things out. And then you have some, you have another teenager that comes in after work and, and you know, you're paying a minimum wage because they're a teenager and, and they're not expecting, you know, $12, $15 an hour. Yet you just need somebody to take signs and lot boxes out. Or you just need someone to enter a listing into the multiple listing service. See, because I, I, I'm honest, always transparent. It takes me three hours to enter a listing into the multiple listing service. Because like the squirrels just start taking across my desk. And I'm like, ah! And so when I get in that situation and those squirrels are running, 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 running across my desk, it literally takes me three hours to go through and check all of those buttons. And so... What I'd like to like, what I'd like to say is that you could hire someone maybe three hours a day to enter three list or three hours three times a week to enter listings for you. And so when you're entering those listings into the MLS, they could probably do it in 45 minutes. What's taking you three hours? And instead of you taking $750 an hour because that's what you're worth, $750 to $250 an, an hour times three hours. So instead of you taking $750 to, to away from your business, you pay them $7 or $8 an hour to enter a listing into the multiple listing service. And so we got to start looking in ways that we can leverage, ladies and gentlemen. I know that it seems, seems like a challenge sometimes that I remember the first time I took bold back in 2010, and, and John Prescott, I said, John, man, if I'm going to continue to lead generate at this high of level, making a hundred contacts every single week, I said, man, I'm getting business. I mean, I got listings. I can't get them into the MLS fast enough. He said, you figure it out, J. Michael. I said, so what do I do? Do I hire a teenager? Do you know, what, what do I do? And he goes, you figure it out. And so that's, and when we're looking at leverage and we're hiring our first admin, we definitely stick to the career visioning process. Yet if you just need some leverage on some stuff, putting signs, lot boxes out, ladies and gentlemen, teenagers do an amazing job at just driving up to a house, putting a lot box on, dropping a key in the cradle and, and popping it up and putting a sign in the yard. And so stick to the five things, leverage everything else. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, Millionaire Real Estate Agent book talks about. Are you truly leveraging yourself so that you can stay on the five things that earn you income? Putting signs out does not earn you income. Putting lot boxes on the doors do not earn you income. Staying in the five things does. And so as we finish up here on the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, I just would like to say, make sure, make sure you stick to your five big rocks and play in your role and leverage everything else out. And you will become a millionaire too. Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful day. Go out there, be bold and crush it.